pelican with some very soft mangoes. Some closet full of skeletons and terry cloth kangos. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mango Kango here, and we're back with another video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to get PNG images or any kind of image uploaded into the game as a decal and have it work properly and also kind of learn the basics on how I kind of edit these images to get them to fit and to color match or look nice in general. Alright, so before we begin here, um, I just want to let you guys know this is the program I'm going to be using in today's video. Um, they give you three free uploads every day, which is great if you don't want to spend any money. Otherwise, it's literally only 75 cents a month. So, if, you know, for anyone who has a job or something like that, you know, 75 cents is like the least of your worries. So that's pretty good. And it's only once a month. You couldn't really ask for anything more and you get infinite f like photo, sh photo editing abilities, which is pretty nice. And the program's called Pixlr. I can link it in the description as well. All right, so to get started here, um, I looked up something pretty simple. I have floor tiles texture. And you can look up anything and have the word texture at the end, and I'm sure you'll be able to find something like this. You can also look up seamless, and that means that um, you won't get any weird seam marks or gradient errors in the um, image that you're trying to upload. So as you can like see, a lot of these are already squares, but if they weren't a square, I'll also show you how to get it to be a perfect square with the program that I'm using. So I already downloaded this image, but if you don't know already, you can click on the image and right click it to save the image, or you can just copy it or drag it into this editor program and it'll be there for you. And then I have it here ready for myself. So if you needed to get this to be a perfect square, obviously it is already a 474, 474. You just gotta make sure these two numbers, the width and the height are the exact same, and it will always be a perfect square. That way the image doesn't stretch when you upload it to Roblox, because I've seen that happen a lot, where the image gets very stretched out. All right, and then another thing we can do here right away is get it to be a good color for us. So if we want it to be more vibrant, we can have it be more vibrant. If we want it to be less vibrant, we can have it be less vibrant. And you can just kind of play around with these colors. Um, I'm sure some of you that already know a lot about photo editing understand how this works and stuff. Saturation makes it more black and white. Um, stuff like that, temperature changes, but the hue is what's probably a pretty important thing if you're really trying to change that color. So if you wanted these to be like a pink wood, I'd probably do something like this. Maybe make the vibrance down a little bit, temperature, slide it up a little bit because I'm trying to get it to be a very specific color. Then you can go to brightness and get that brightness up so you have a more pastel look to it. Maybe you want sharper edges, you could down the exposure, or you could up the exposure. I'm not going to really mess around with the exposure too much here. Alright, so this is already pretty good because, um, you know, usually this is where you would stop, good enough. So you can, you want to usually put the quality to 100% as it's usually not even that big of a difference anyway. And save the image. Alright, and now you probably want to title it something because you want to remember where it is. So I'm just going to do pink wood. Alright, and then you're going to want to go to the create area on the main Roblox web page and this will open up the um, creator dashboard area and you're just going to want to go to your development items so these are the, all the items that you've ever developed and then go to your decals and this is where you'll find all the objects that you've uploaded so you're going to want to click on upload a asset and then go to the upload button here and as you can see it is right here so you're just going to grab that and click open and it's called Pinkwood. You can change the name here if you want to and upload the image. And sometimes this doesn't actually load right away. As you can see, it's white here. So if that's an issue for you, you're just going to want to do the same thing again. Yeah, it's annoying, but it is what it is. You just got to do it again sometimes. And usually on the second time, it works for whatever reason. Yep. And then you can just archive this one. You could wait for it to load eventually, but sometimes it legitimately doesn't ever load. As you can see, this one has never loaded for me, and then I have other ones that have loaded. So you're going to want to click on this now, and now this should be on your profile if you have it public, so other people can use it technically, so just keep that in mind. 
And make sure that it's also an image that isn't going to get monetized by Roblox because that can be really annoying because if you mess that up twice, then you're banned for a day. All right, and then you're going to want to just copy this number right here, and that's the image ID. So that's the ID that this image runs off of because there's thousands, millions there, but they each need their own set of code, which is um, what this, these numbers are so that it recognizes it in the game. So once you're in game, now you're going to want to grab your decal or your poster and place it down and go to your favorites area and right here you get the option to paste in that ID. And then I pasted it in just a heads up and then you're going to want to just click on it and as you can see there's your decal. It's in the game now. So those are the kind of just the basic steps on how to get these decals but how would you go about getting the PNGs? So um, for to make things really easy, you could look up anything you want with PNG at the end of it. So if I were to look up a cat, PNG, you just want to make sure you have the word PNG at the end of it, and then you can click enter, and um, lo and behold, you have a bunch of cats. Alright, and I'm going to pick this one because this cat, I guess, is kind of funny looking, so we'll, we'll save this one here. And you're just going to want to open that image, and... Yeah, as you can see, there's no background, it's just that pattern. So, you obviously want to make sure this pattern is here. Now, theoretically, if you want to change anything now, go ahead. You could add literally anything you want, as long as it's a PNG and that image will be gone. You can also take the cut tool and press remove and remove a section, and it will show up like that when you upload it to Roblox. We're just going to do it as is here. So you're going to want to make sure it's a perfect square. As you can see, it's not a perfect square. A rough estimate here on what the square is going to be like. It doesn't always have to be a square. Just keep that in mind as well. But for the sake of this video, we're going to make sure that these are even. So we'll just do 770 for both sides and apply. And then you can unlock the image too to drag it down a little bit. Because as you can see, the bottom, it's missing like a bit of it. So... It's part of that alignment thing. Just make sure it's like that. And it's that easy. Now you have like kind of a perfect PNG image. And as you can see, you want to have PNG selected because it recognizes it's transparent. Usually, if the program doesn't recognize it's transparent, then you got an issue because your image probably isn't a PNG. But you're just going to want to save it as is. And then you're going to want to go back to the page where you were before, upload your asset to Roblox. Alright, and just make sure that it's your newly edited one as well. So we're going to grab that. Rename it because R8 is kind of weird. So we'll just do like uh, crazy boy. It's a crazy boy. Alright. going to upload that as crazy boy. Hopefully it works first try. If it doesn't, we're going to have to do it again because Roblox is devastatingly slow. Alright, and as you can see, here's your PNG image, so you're just going to want to click on the image and get your code for this one, which will be up here. You can control C to copy, and then head over to your game and get your decal once again. Alright, then you can place it down, make sure the poster is facing towards you, and then control V, and or put the numbers down here. And there you go, you get the image with the transparent background because it's a PNG. So overall, it's not like the hardest thing to do, but, but how would you do something like the washing machines where you want to get it at a certain height? So knowing that this sits at about a block's uh, height and that a regular poster is two blocks tall, all we have to do is some simple math and cut it in half. Alright, so if we look up washing machine, um, as you can see, this looks very similar to the one I used, if not identical. But as you can see, it's not a PNG. Well, technically that's not a problem, so I'm going to show you how we can go about that. So I'm going to copy the image, and we're going to paste it in here. And as you can see, here's your washing machine. Now what you're going to want to do is take your cutting tool, and go to the square, which is the easiest, and you can use the remove um, feature. And this allows you to remove around the image. So if I go like this, you know, if I did that, it would remove the edge, so we're just going to do that with all the sides here. Alright, and you're done. And it doesn't have to be perfect either. And now you're going to want to go over here and unlock the image, and that gives you free range of motion with the image. And as you can see, that background is already there for you, which is why I like this program. 
it understands that if there's nothing there, it's going to make it a PNG anyway. And then you're just going to want to adjust this. So we can change the size of this if we go to transform over here and make sure that the X is here. Sometimes the X will be there and you can't transform it, but just double click it and then it should work for you. And now we can stretch the image to our liking. And then you just want to make sure that um, it's relatively even on all sides and that the object doesn't look too weird. So you still want it to look normal. Just keep that in mind. Okay, and we can copy this image. Now we have two of them, and it also helps you line stuff up. That's what that little green feature is there. And we want to make sure we can include both of these in the image, so if it's too big, then just shrink it down a little bit. Alright, let's try duplicating this layer. Alright, and as you can see, that's not bad. So we can work with this here. And then, since it's a little tall up here, you're just going to want to crop it and make sure that everything's the same height. So you want the height to be the same as the width over here. That way you have a perfect square. You can just type it in. I'm going to just scroll down to get it where I want it. And then change that last number. And now you have a perfect square. And although this is a perfect square, I don't think this is halfway in between. So you're going to have to do a rough estimate here of where you need this lined up. As long as it looks about halfway, you should be good. You can also always test this out. And that looks pretty good. I can just visually look at this and say that that's probably about halfway. So you can adjust the color again if you um, wish to. Otherwise, you should be good and make sure it's selected as PNG. You can title it Washing Machines Gray-ish. And go back to your decals dashboard and upload your asset or image. Click on upload and find your image. And it's right here, so you're just going to want to click your washing machines and upload the image. Alright, and then after pausing the recording and coming back and waiting about uh, 20 hours for them to verify that the washing machines are uh, not anything bad, we can now go ahead and copy and paste our um, numbers. Also, it didn't actually take that long, that's just me kind of hating on them, because they do be taking some like mad long time sometimes to verify whether or not an image is bad or not but regardless we have it now all right and if we place down this cabinet which is actually kind of nice because it's just one base color and it's two blocks and exactly one block tall so we're going to use that for this grab your image and have it right there against it and then copy and um, yeah, let's see what it looks like. Alright, perfect. It's a little tall, so what you can do as you adjust it, because obviously for these I made sure it was like the perfect height for you guys, but uh, for this, in this case, what you can do is go back to the image, which is here, and it can be a little bit tedious, but you can grab it and just go ahead and lower it by a little bit, like that. And then you can go ahead and save after that, obviously. But for now, um, we're just going to rock with what we have here. And as you can see, it kind of works for what it is. I mean, someone walks in your house and they see this. And this works with drawers. You can get anything to be lined up where you want it. It just takes a little bit of time and you have to adjust some things sometimes. But it's all measurements and I'm sure you guys will get the hang of it and understand where I'm coming from with this one. Now lastly, how do you get an image that is two, like, two blocks tall, sorry, two posters tall or even a bunch of posters in length and uh, height. So an example of this would be the bush here. So we have the first half and grab our second half and put it up here and we get a bush. A nice bush. It looks really good. But how did I actually go about doing this? Well, to do that, I actually use this website um, called Pine Tools and it's a split image tool. So you can go over to choose file, and as an example, I'm actually going to use this ping pong table right here. So if we put that into here, this is what we're left with, and it recognizes that it's a PNG, and this website's completely free to use as well, which is nice. And then you can choose to split it vertically or horizontally, and vertically will cut it in half right here. And you can choose if you want it on a grid, that's for bigger images, and then quantity of blocks, we want two because there's going to be one here and one here. And then you can choose PNG or JPEG, obviously for this one we're going to want PNG, 
or if the input is already a PNG, which I know it is because it has .png, then we can just keep this as is, and then just up the quality, and then split your image. And then it's going to give you the how many pieces you have, so two pieces were generated, and then it also has um, an option to download all the files in a zip file, which can be a little bit hard to locate sometimes, so I always like to choose individually one at a time. And you just click on each one, and when you click on it, I'll download one just to show you that it's like nothing weird. It downloads here, you can open that file, and as you can see it split it for you right down the middle. And then you can combine these two posters in Pizza Place once you upload them as decals, and it'll work perfectly. So to show you what this looks like, it's right here. As you can see, it works exactly as planned because it uses one poster here and one poster here. Obviously I had to line this up to get it to look the way it does right here, but um, besides that, um, it's really quite quite nice to have all those tools, and sometimes I get that people don't exactly know how to find those tools or where they are, which ones actually work and do the job properly. But regardless, I hope you guys uh, really did enjoy this video. I tried to make it pretty simple for you guys, even though it is still kind of something that's complicated, but as you guys do it more, you guys will get better, and I just want it to be out there for you guys so that people know how to do it. Anyways, with that, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next video.